Should you go for the Security Plus or the CISP certification? Which one is better? Join me in this video and we will compare the two certifications going through the pros and the cons of each to help you make a better informed decision. But first, if this is the first time that we're meeting, hello, my name is John Good, and here on my channel, I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button to let me know. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell icon so you don't miss future content. And make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you like my video or any other training videos that I've made, head on over to my website at johngood.com where I put up all of my courses and more without interruptions in the videos. Also, the Discord channel is starting to grow, so if you want to join me on there as well, head on over to the link in the description. All right, let's get into the video. Now, depending on who you talk to, you're going to get a bunch of different answers and different reasons why you should go for one certification over the other. So why you should go for the Security Plus or why you should go for the CISP. Some people are going to say that the CISP is better and some are going to say that Security Plus is better. But which one is actually better? Although I can't make that decision for you, I do have both certifications. So I feel like I know a decent amount about both of them and have a pretty good handle on which one is better. So let's go ahead and start looking at the Security Plus from CompTIA. Now I've brought it up on the website here. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the details for the exam. So the current exam was released in 2017 and you can see that SY0501 is the exam code. And the description about the exam and those that are certified says that the successful candidate will have the knowledge and skills to install and configure systems, to secure applications, networks, and devices. With the Security Plus exam, and you'll find with a lot of certification exams in general, that if they are multiple choice exams, there's probably a decent chance that you're not going to be fully qualified to do some of the jobs. For instance, with this certification, this is not going to qualify you to run into a network and configure, let's say, a Cisco firewall. It's just not going to because there's a lot more details and a lot more training that you need to do in order to do that. But conceptually, it's going to give you a lot of information. And it's good information that you should know. As far as the exam itself, you have 90 questions on the Security Plus exam. So that's a lot of multiple choice questions to run through, especially because you only get 90 minutes to complete the questions. Now, as far as the question types, like I was saying, this exam is multiple choice and performance-based. Basically with performance-based questions, it's going to be things like drag and drop and putting things in order, uh, depending on what the subject is. So the order that they happen. Passing score 750. And then the big thing with the Security Plus is there's no experience requirement. So you don't have to have, you know, five years of experience in order to sit for the exam or in order to get certified with the Security Plus exam. And then the cost is 349 US dollars. For certification exams, that's kind of middle of the road. You'll find ones that are less, but honestly, that's pretty in line with different certification exams. There's some other exams like entry level exams to get into cloud environments that are, you know, a hundred or $200, but honestly, $350, $349, that's pretty on par with the pricing. Now, what has been my experience as far as the security plus? So the security plus was actually the first certification exam that I got. I actually passed it back in 2013. So several years ago, but it was a very interesting and honestly enjoyable experience to learn about all the Security Plus topics and just really learning more about cybersecurity in general. And I didn't really find the information to be that difficult to grasp. Remember, the Security Plus is generally thought of as one of the entry level cybersecurity exams or certifications. So it's not overly know, over, it's not overload on information. With that being said, it's not going to be something that you can just walk into the testing environment and pass. You're probably going to have to put a month or two at least of studying in. And some people fail the exam. It happens, especially with a lot of these certification exams. 
depending on your background, I probably would recommend that you get the Network Plus first from CompTIA if you're going to go for the Security Plus exam. It just depends. If you don't have a lot of IT background or networking background, then getting that information can help. But honestly, you could just study for the Security Plus exam and you could pass. Now don't leave the video yet. We still have to go over the CISP certification and then we have to compare the Security Plus and the CISP certification and let you know which one is actually better. So stick around for the rest of the video. Now let's talk about the CISP certification or the CISSP certification from ISC squared. Now, this is one of those exams that is quite daunting. The previous version, it was 250 questions and it would take up to six hours to pass. That's how long you had to take the exam. So remember, Security Plus was 90 minutes and 90 questions. Now, the CISP certification exam, you get 100 to 150 questions and you get up to three hours to take the exam. So it's much more in line with the Security Plus as far as the time allotment and the required questions that you have to answer. What type of questions do you get? Well, again, you get multiple choice questions and then you get what they call advanced innovative questions. Basically everything that I could find on this was the exact same thing as these performance-based questions. So it's going to be things like drag and drop, putting things in order, and those kind of style of questions. Now here's the kicker. In order to get certified for the CISP, you have to have at least four years of experience. That's with a one-year waiver. Otherwise, you have to have five years of experience. Compared to the Security Plus, you didn't have to have any experience. There was some recommended experience, but you didn't have to have the experience. So that's an important distinction. The cost is 699 US dollars. So it's definitely more expensive than the Security Plus exam is. Now, what about the domains or the objectives for the CISP exam? Well, the CISP exam covers a lot more information. Remember, it's a lot more questions if you have to answer all 150 questions. It's also a longer exam as far as the time duration that you have to take. That should indicate that it's going to take a little bit more time to go through the questions and answer them correctly. Now, as far as my experience with the CISP, I did make a video on how I passed in under two weeks. So definitely make sure you check that video out for some good information. Now, if you're enjoying the video so far, you know what to do as far as liking the video and make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so you don't miss future content when I release it. Also, if you're interested in more cybersecurity training without interruptions like this, head on over to my website at johngood.com where I put up all of my training courses and videos without interruptions. All right, let's get back to the video. Now let's do a deep dive comparison between the CISP exam and the Security Plus exam. The first thing that we want to compare is the required experience. Remember when I was talking about the Security Plus, there was no experience requirement in order to take and get certified as a Security Plus practitioner. With the CISP exam, you have to have at least four years experience with a one-year waiver. Otherwise, you have to have five years experience. Now, I know there's going to be some people that say, well, John, what about the associate of ISC squared? What about the associate CISP exam? Well, here's the thing with the associate of ISC squared. You can take the CISP exam before you have the experience requirement. But if you pass it, you are an associate of ISC squared. You are not an associate CISP. You're not an associate who passed the CISP. The exact distinction is associate of ISC squared. Now I'll put a link in the description that explains it, but that's very important. You can't go around claiming that you're a CISP and you don't have the experience requirement. In order to get certified for the CISP, you actually have to submit your resume and experience qualifications, and then somebody has to vouch for you. So that's very important. That actually helps protect the integrity of that certification. If you don't have the experience requirements for the CISP, you actually don't get the benefits of the CISP. You can't even say that you passed the exam. So that's a real downside. The only benefit is that you have the exam out of the way, which can be helpful and in the right circumstances, it definitely can be useful, but just keep that in mind. 
The next thing you want to compare is your experience in the domains for the certain certifications. So for the CISP and for the Security Plus. The Security Plus is generally meant for practitioners. So you're going to find things that are much more in line and geared towards the technology. And there is far less to learn. With the CISP, most of the preparation books are going to be well over a thousand pages and it's going to cover a lot more than the Security Plus. The CISP is meant to cover everything in cybersecurity or the majority that you're going to run into. The Security Plus is a much smaller subset. With that being said, obviously the CISP is going to take you a decent amount longer to study and pass than the Security Plus would. Now, what about the cost difference? Security Plus, remember, again, it's $349. The CISP, $699. Okay, That is quite the difference if you fail. So especially if you're paying for it out of pocket, do you really want to take the chance on the higher level certification that you, know, you really you don't want to pay for twice? So think about that cost difference as well. Let's talk about maintaining the certifications. So the Security Plus exam, it's going to run you $50 a year to maintain the certification. And then over the three year cycle, because it lasts for three years, you have to get 50 CPE credits, they call them, continuing education credits basically, or continuing professional education. So you have to do some kind of training. The CISP is going to run you $125 per year, and you have to get 120 credits over the three-year cycle. So again, it's a three-year cycle, but you have to get significantly more continuing education credits in order to maintain the certification. So when it comes down to it, both certifications can be extremely helpful and good to get jobs in security. There's going to be a lot of different factors to consider in pursuing the Security Plus certification or should you go for the CISP certification. In a lot of cases, it's actually going to come down to the experience level because if you have 10 years of experience in security already, you probably don't need to go for the Security Plus exam. You probably should go for the CISP exam. Now, of course, you could go for the Security Plus exam as kind of a, a buildup for the CISP, but you know, realistically, at that point, you have the experience and you could go for the CISP. Likewise, if you have two years experience, the CISP isn't going to help you because even that associate of ISC squared level or that designation, you're not supposed to say what exam you took and you're not an associate of CISP. You can't be hitting the HR filters when you submit your resume for a job. So what is my opinion? Well, my opinion is you really should try to get both, but it does depend on you know where you're at in your career. If you're early on in your career or you're just switching over, then I would definitely go for a Security Plus certification. If you're later in your career and you've been around for a while, you know, then a CISP makes sense because you're probably going to have a lot of experience in these different areas and different domains. So with all that being said, if you're interested in going for the CISP certification, make sure you check out my video on how I passed the CISP in under two weeks. And then I also made a video on why you will fail the CISP certification exam. So check out those videos. And then if you're going for the Security Plus exam, make sure you check out my course on the Security Plus exam. I made a full course for it and I have it on my website at johngood.com. Now question of the day, are you going to go for the Security Plus or the CISP certification exam? Let me know down in the comments. Remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Head on over to my website at johngood.com for full training courses. And until next time, I will see you later.